and welcome to the second installment of our video series as Genomenon documents its race to curate the genome. We've got a lot of exciting progress to share, and to help me out in this, I've invited a friend and colleague, Anna, to, to help me describe some of those exciting new details. So Anna, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Yeah, I'm Anna McGill, and I'm the Director of Product Quality here at Genomenon. Uh, what about your background, Anna? So my background is as a genetic counselor. So I spent quite a few years in the hereditary cancer clinic, speaking with clients directly and, and patients and, and helping them interpret their genetic test reports. And since then, I've been in the variant interpretation space for about 10 years now. Great. So perfect person to help me share this news. Mm -hmm. uh, just to remind everybody, if you're if you're not aware, Genomenon is a mission-driven company, and that mission is to make genomic information actionable, to save and improve lives of patients with rare disease, um, rare genetic disease, including cancer. And so I, I mentioned that our curation team, um, which Anna supervises the output of in terms of uh, assessing the quality, has been very busy. And we've got a, a milestone to announce in that we've recently released our 600th gene, fully curated according to clinical standard guidelines. So there's a lot to be proud of. Um, I'm proud. I'm certainly very proud of the team and the work that Genomenon has been, been doing. One of those sets of genes that we've released is the ACMG secondary findings genes. So Anna, if you wouldn't mind, can you help uh, our viewers understand what that means, mm -hmm. um, what the complexion of that secondary findings gene list is, and how it's used in clinical practice? Yeah, so this is a very important set of genes, and this is a, a set of genes that was selected because of the clinical impact that's available for the patients. So this is a set of genes that when any lab does like an exome test, they people can opt in to see if they carry any variants in these genes that might cause them to develop um, something like cancer or a cardiophenotype later in life. Um, and so people are getting these results in testing for various different indications. And so it's a really good way to have the maximum impacts by having these type of genes curated and available for, for people that need them. That's great. And so I'm passingly familiar with the composition of that list. Can you speak to some of the actors in that list, some of the genes and, and how important they are in terms of these secondary findings? Yeah, so there's a, a broad swath that are cardio related, and there's also a broad swath that are hereditary cancer related. Uh, and then there's some other various phenotypes thrown in there as well. So these are things that usually predispose to disease later in life. So someone might not be born knowing that they have this, and thus this information can help guide their care later on. Um, is it considered best practice for labs to report out on any variants that they find in these secondary findings genes? Yeah, so it absolutely is, although uh, uh, the patient can opt in or opt out of these results. So the labs need to be able to provide this information to you if you request that information, but you are able to also not want to, to know that information about yourself as well. So everyone that provides exome testing, for example, needs to have access to this information um, and for it to be correct and accurate to be able to provide that information to their patients. Yeah. Um, Anna, can you help me understand how the data that we've collected for these ACMG secondary findings genes and curated compares to publicly available databases such as, say, ClinVar? Yeah, absolutely. So with ClinVar, there's a myriad of variants in there, but all of those are ones that have actually been seen in the lab and are reported directly to ClinVar. So some of them may be private variants that are only seen in a certain family and don't have any published data behind them. Our focus is a little bit different in that we curate everything that's actually available in the literature. So we bring all the information such as like functional studies and you know patients and um, biochemical levels, that sort of thing, all um, to you and to be able to be searchable so that if a client sees that they have a, a, a variance, they can search that and they know that if there's a functional study published for that variant, if there's any other of that type of information, that that is then accessible. That's great. Um, uh, one other thing to note is that there's different complexions of variants. There's a different distribution of variants, as you said. Um, for instance, ClinVar has an overrepresentation of benign variants, passenger yeah. mutations or, 
or incidentally found uh, polymorphisms. So there's a skewing, a selection in favor of those benign variants, whereas, as you mentioned quite rightly, Genomenon focuses on the published variants. There's a selection for those variants having been published because they're disease-causing. And so that is reflected in the final interpretation of the evidence that we've collected because of the functional studies and the clinical circumstance that, that those variants have been found in, in those studies. Um, I wonder, Anna, if we're if you can speak to how we're using ClinVar in any of the um, uh, quality assurance, quality control measures that you and your team undertake. Yeah, we, we actually compare with ClinVar quite extensively. We want to make sure we meet the industry standards and that if there's, you know, anything that that is not re represented in the literature, we review that as well. So um, we really take an effort to look at all aspects of any variant that's been published. So we want to make sure we look at every database out there that's possible um, to make sure we're not missing any information. Yeah, pain, painstaking work. It's quite uh, painstaking, yes. Uh, important to note for, for our viewers that um, while we talk about a dis difference in the nature of the variants that are present in ClinVar and the nature of the variants that are in Genomenon, Genomenon includes the ClinVar variants and is uh, inclusive of those as a superset of the, the variants that have been found in clinical cases as promulgated in ClinVar, as well as published and found in, in the genomic search engine mastermind. Thank you so much, Jana, for sharing your experience with ACMG and its applicability to the, the clinical labs that we service at Genomenon. I'd just like to remind everybody that all of the data that Anna has talked about for the, the uh, ACMG secondary findings genes will be available for professional edition users of Mastermind in its full curated form. And you can learn more about that as we attend the ASHG conference coming up here in a, in a few short months. Uh, and just to wrap up, to say that we're not done yet, we've got many um, more curator hours to dedicate to curating the entire full human clinical exome. So stay tuned to this channel for more information as we make progress.